Yeah, what do you want? Hey, don't a real there anything? You want another war story, huh? You want to hear about some other world getting wasted, eh? I knew you were the type. Your stagnant republic has never seen some of the strange creatures and races we fought on the Outer Rim in those years. <laughs> and you never will now. We were going through the asteroid fields of the Crispin system at the very edge of the galaxy, playing with the pirates and smugglers we found there. The main belt in the Crispin system consists of mainly small rocks covered in frozen methane gas shells, and the pirates were using them for cover. Ha! <laughs> I remember using a thermal generator to cause the outer layer of one of the asteroids to vaporize in a picosecond. It blew out and shredded the three smugglers using it for cover. But that was a mistake. The asteroid I had targeted was smaller than most, maybe a dozen meters on a side. On the outside, it looked the same as any other, just a ball covered in frozen gas. But something must have been inside it, something inactive in the cold. The heat of my blast might have triggered something or woken something up. After I'd hit it, spots of light and heat appeared all over the thin shell, still covering it, evaporating the gases. What lay underneath looked like some sort of rocky growth. A deformed rock, pitted by scores of micrometeorite scars. I think something even older might have been inside that. It started rotating faster and faster as we watched it. After a second, it started spraying fire, thermal projectiles that melted our armor like wax. We were caught completely by surprise. Before we could counterattack, it fled at an incredible speed. We couldn't catch it, but we could follow its hyperspace wake. We followed its trail as far as we could, heading away from the galactic core. When it finally led beyond the edge of our galaxy, we abandoned our efforts. Anything that wants to commit suicide in that great void is not worth our trouble trying to catch. Uh, that's the only story I have for now. I'll tell you some more stuff later if we get the chance. Is there something else you want to know? Hey, don't worry. I think you've got a real warrior. Is there anything else? I don't have as many strange stories like the last one I told you, but I do have a couple about me and the stuff I've done. In one battle above the world of Althea, my unit managed to defeat a force of Althea ten times our own size. That battle gained me command of an entire subsect of my clan. For five days they had managed to hold off our forces, keeping us to the outer rings of their world, preventing us from attacking it directly. My task was to assault one of their flanks with a false attack. The Althiri would be drawn out by the units I had sent in. Once they had surrounded those units, the bulk of my forces would attack from the rear and defeat them in detail. Things didn't go as I had planned. I saw an opening, a mistake they had made in the disposition of their forces, and took it. While fending off our main force, they had let their fleet split in two. The center of their entire fleet was left exposed. I turned my forces and assaulted the center of their fleet, decimating them. Their slow, ponderous ship could not turn to face us without being overwhelmed. Their command vessels were destroyed in seconds. Their ranks were thrown into chaos. It was amusing to watch the surviving ships scatter and flee. Several even tried to dive through the plane of the rings to escape us. They were shredded by the rings, or crashed into rocks, or were destroyed by our forces as we pursued them. Warriors do not flee from a battle if they are losing. They fight to the end, as we did against your Jedi Revan. Another time, maybe, I'll tell you about how the war with the Republic went. For now, let's just get on with things. Is there something else you want to know? Hey, don't worry. A real... There any... Hmm... I think I'll tell you a bit about the recent war we had with the Republic. That might be more familiar to you. The one where Jedi Revan beat my people. We started by conquering worlds outside the Republic. We did it quietly so the Republic wouldn't really know what was going on until it was too late. When we finally did hit the Republic worlds, they had no idea we were coming. We came in through three invasion corridors in adjacent sectors. Anyone who put up a fight 
or wouldn't fight, was crushed. We raised whole worlds trying to provoke the Republic into fighting us. I don't particularly enjoy wiping out worlds for its own sake, but the cowardly tactics the Republic defenders used left us little choice. Hiding in the homes of civilians, using families as shields, thinking we would not use appropriate force on their bases inside major cities. They underestimated our resolve, and what measures are acceptable in war. Those who cannot defend themselves should not be around those who can in battle. If annihilating a city is the kind of power it takes to overwhelm a Republic shield device, then that's what we did. Necessary force to destroy all opposition. I have no time or patience for cowards. They deserve to be hunted down and exterminated like vermin. There was no honor in wiping them out like rats. But some of your forces did redeem the Republic in our eyes. Especially later. Later, when Revan had joined the war. But we'll get back to that. We've wasted too much time already. Is there something else you want to know? Hey, don't... A real... There any... We fought against the Republic forces for some time, over the course of many battles. At the start, they were not much of a threat to speak of. But once the Jedi Revan took charge, things began to turn against us. The Republic fleets began to use more than just basic tactics. Feints, counterattacks, mass deceptions. Revan was a genius on the field. Revan abandoned worlds of their defenders so that others would be too fortified to strike and was willing to make sacrifices in order to advance goals. And in the end, Revan proved too much for us. There was no one else. The entire Republic had committed its forces behind Revan. The Sith had retreated back to their empire, and there were none else strong enough to challenge us. It looked like the entire galaxy was within our grasp. I still remember that final battle in the skies above Malachor V. The two fleets filling the space around it, outshining the stars. It was not your ships, or your men, or your vaunted fight for freedom that won this, the final battle of the war. It was by the actions of one person, the Jedi Revan, that you prevailed. His strategies and tactics defeated the best of us. Even Mandalore himself was taken aback by the ferocity of his attacks, the tenacity of his defenses, and the subtleties of his plans. He fought us to a standstill, and then began pushing back. We really didn't have a chance. It was what we had wanted all along, in a way. We wanted to fight the best, in a battle that would be remembered for centuries. And we did. And Revan won. I don't hold a grudge against Revan, and neither do any of my people. It was the greatest moment of my life to be in that battle. If Revan had been a Mandalorian, nothing in the galaxy would have stopped us. But wishing for the past to be different is useless. Better look to the future, as we should now. We'll talk more later, I think. Is there something else you want to know? Hey, don't are there any- Your choice. Yeah, what do you want? Hey, don't worry. A real war- There any- Your cho- Statement. HK-47 is ready to serve, Master. Statement. I know some elements of my functionality, Master, but not all. Qualification. I suspected that it might, Master, but without memory, I had no way of knowing whether or not I knew that was true. Qualification. Uh... Not so much, Master. I spoke out of ignorance. I assumed the Athorian was responsible for my memory loss. That does not mean I am not a fully loyal droid willing to serve its master. Right, Master? Answer. I believe I have been damaged several times in the past, Master. I have always been repaired, but perhaps full functionality has not been restored. Answer. Some of my motor functions can be safely repaired, Master, but anything in relation to my memory core is extremely sensitive. I have safeguards installed to protect that core that I cannot deactivate. 
It is not impossible that other, lesser memory functions could be restored, however. Answer. You may attempt to restore portions of my deleted memory, Master, but some skill at repair is required. The deeper functions of my core memory, however, would still be unadvisable to tamper with. Conjecture. It is possible that some external stimulus might result in the memory core being reactivated, but I am unaware of any program existence to do so. Answer. Simply tell me that you wish to make the attempt, Master, and I will attempt to walk you through it. Please do be careful. Affirmative. If you believe your skill request, I only ask that you be oh so very careful, Master. I am too valuable and well-crafted to perish at the hands of ineptitude. Statement. As you wish, Master. The first stage is the simple one, and that is accessing my central control cluster. This may take a while. First, you will need to open three panels. And now rewire the last three relays. Yes, good. Well done, Master. I believe your operation was a success. Accessing new memory. Access complete. I have restored a great deal of information about my previous owner, Master. Would you like to hear it? Recitation. The earliest memory of my last owner specifies that he was human, a low-ranking commercial officer for SizeTech Corporation. I am unaware of his designation. He purchased me from an acquaintance I cannot identify for the purposes of protocol and bodyguard duties. Explanation. That previous owner is part of memories that are still deleted, Master. It is customary for droids' memories to be wiped when it is sold. Answer. Negative, Master. The human was terminated by this HK-47 unit prior to system shutdown. Explanation. My former master had owned me for a duration of two standard months before discovering my assassination protocol. He was pleased by the discovery. The human informed me that a competitor corporation was preparing to market a product that would ruin him personally. He was most agitated. He activated my assassination protocol and instructed me to kill all those responsible for the competing product. I proceeded to carry out my order. Information. This HK-47 unit is complete with protocol that, when invoked, will set me to independently carry out a termination. I will go to whatever lengths, travel whatever distances are required to complete the termination. This is the reason for my combat skills. Advisement. Unfortunately, the assassination protocol is currently non-functional. You will not be able to activate it. Answer. Several of my actuators were damaged by my former owner. They cannot be repaired, Master. Sad though that is. My former master was unaware of this, but the competitor was in fact an arm of SizeTech Corporation, my master's own employer. It did not take long for my master to realize his mistake. By then, I had already terminated 104 corporate officers. Statement. It was nothing really, Master. The majority of them were not even expecting it, and I move very quickly. I do not know why my master was so upset, really. He was an officer of SizeTech and a potential target, but I cannot terminate my own master. I would assume that being the sole officer remaining, he would surely be promoted. Instead, however, the human chose to go insane with rage and attack me. Objection. Naturally not, Master. As I said, I am incapable of purposefully terminating... My Master was not a smart man, however. While he was screaming and stabbing me with a writing utensil, he managed to pierce one of my actuators. The resulting shock terminated him and sadly destroyed my assassination protocol. Pure luck on his part, I suspect. Statement. I was only doing as I was told, Master. I would have told the human the proper codes to deactivate my protocol, had he asked. I shut down immediately whenever my master dies. I can only assume that while I was shut down, size tech was dismantled and I was auctioned off as former corporate property. Observation. No doubt my sale price was quite cheap, leading to Yukalaka's purchase. How very demeaning. 
observation. So am I, Master. Though I apologize for not having an assassination mode to offer you. I have recovered knowledge of some other actuators which will enhance my performance, Master. I will activate them now. But as for my own history, negative. It will require further effort on your part to restore them, if you wish. Though certain stimuli could always restore my core still, as I explained. For now, please excuse me, Master. I wish to meditate upon the face of my former meatbag master as he was electrocuted. I find it most soothing. Statement. HK4. Affirmative. If you request, I... Statement. As... And now rewire the last access complete. I have recovered information. Statement. It appears that my previous owner was a human senator on the planet Coruscant. A man of importance who obviously appreciated quality craftsmanship. Answer. It does not seem so, Master. No. He required a protocol droid only and wanted one as cheaply as possible. I do not know who sold me to him. I do remember that I was very pleased to be the property of a senator. One of his assistants discovered my assassination functions later through questioning. The assistant was quite alarmed and told the senator I should be scrapped quickly to avoid a scandal. Naturally, the senator had me eliminate the fool. Answer. Unfortunately so, Master. While he lived, however, I maintained a most useful existence. I was most proud to have partaken in the political system of the galaxy. During the time my owner possessed me, he gained significant rank. Given time, I believe he could have become Chancellor. I even eliminated a few key opponents that he did not ask for. Freebies, if you will. Answer. Certainly. Why not? I am an intelligent droid, you know. I see an opportunity, and I take it. And my master was most pleased with my work. Observation. I think he would have done far better had he not allowed his use of me to become personal. He set me on his wife. Answer. I am unsure. The human was most agitated and angry. I believe his wife had done something that had displeased him greatly. I was to go to their summer estate and terminate his wife, along with whatever male companion I discovered there. Statement. I have no idea, Master. Cheating seems to be a relevant term only when one is caught in the act. Otherwise, it is viewed as intelligence. No? I journeyed to the southern continent, but it appeared my master was not far behind me. Apparently, he regretted his activation of the protocol. When I found the wife and her companion, I proceeded to launch my attack. But my master interposed his own body and was destroyed. It was rather a strange meatbag thing to do, do you not agree? Naturally, I shut myself down, my master being terminated. Statement. I believe the Senator's wife was unsure what I was or what to do with me. It was she who sold me to the corporate officer, an acquaintance. Answer. As previously, I have found a few more... There is still nothing from previous memories uncovered. You will have to... With luck, I will discover the stimulus to unlock... Statement. HK... Statement. I have little... Statement. A... Affirmative. Request. Statement. And now rewire access complete. I have accessed information on my owner prior to the Senator, Master. Answer. It appears that previous to my ownership by the Senator, I was the property of one Bochaba the Hut on the planet Slaheron.
Answer, it does not appear so, or at least Bochaba was not my first owner. He purchased me from somewhere else. Hmm. My memories tell me that, for a time, Bochaba was one of the most feared gangsters on Slaheron. I helped him with this reputation greatly. Over a span of one year, I terminated a grand total of 322 sentient meat bags. These contracts made Bochaba very wealthy. It was unfortunate but inevitable that eventually Bochaba would overstep his bounds. I had just cleared two hut households when the exchange retaliated. Statement. I was not even present when my old master was assassinated. I did appreciate the artistry behind his demise upon my return, however. Answer. Allow me to say that I have little doubt that residents of that sector were fishing pieces of bochaba out of their soup for weeks afterward. At any rate, I quickly shut down upon my master's death. The rival hut claimed me along with my master's other possessions. Observation. If that hut had only known my true function, he surely would not have sold me to a senator he bribed regularly. Observation. It would have suited my character, Master. I have enjoyed my existence since, more or less, so I do not miss it. Answer. Neg as well I be contemplative. Statement. Affirmative request. Statement. Now close the last panel. Hmm, supplication. As you desire. Statement. H. Query. Don't I? I was under the assumption that organic... Apology. I am afraid I can... Explanation. Someone has... Objection. I would... Answer. Electrical protection systems, mostly. Observation. I can hardly be... Bl Commentary. That is a very clever turn of phrase. Yeah, what do you want? Your ch How can I help? We've... we've already been over this. It was a moment of weakness, a stumble brought on by unbridled passions. But my emotions are firmly in check once more. We need to stay focused on stopping Darth Malak. And I want the others to stay focused as well. I don't want them to get suspicious and start gossiping about our little encounter. So until our mission is over, we need to act with discretion. We shouldn't speak of this anymore. Not until Malak is defeated. Yes, what's on your mind? I already told you, he betrayed us all. Well, there, there is more to it. I'm, I'm sure you don't want to hear about it. It's just that I don't talk about it very much, okay? I told you about my homeworld, Telos. Four years ago, Saul led the Sith fleet there and demanded its surrender. The planet refused, and Saul proceeded to devastate its entire surface. Millions died. I had a, a, a wife and a son on Telos. I thought they would be safe there, but my task force arrived too late to be of much help. We, we didn't have enough medical supplies. The colony was, was burning and the dying were everywhere. I remember holding my wife and screaming for the medics, but the, the, they didn't come in time. Of course not, how could you? I've, 
I, mean, I had nothing left after that, really. I, I devoted myself to the fleet. Hunting Saul was my only purpose. I, I miss them. And I know killing Saul won't bring them back. And, I, and it won't make me happy again, but I... I have to do it. I don't expect you to understand, but I have to pay him back for what he's done. I have to. It's all I have left. She had courage, and... And she was stubborn. Could never talk her out of anything when she put her mind to it. And she hated it when I signed back onto the fleet at the start of the war. I had planned on, on leaving soon to join her. His name was Dustal, and I don't know what happened to him. The colony was a complete ruin, and we never found any trace of him. I made inquiries and followed the reports from Telos for years, but I stopped. Anyway, I hope that answers your questions. Let's, uh, let's continue with what we were doing. Yes, what's on your mind? I'm not really sure, but you can... Yes. What is it? I... I have been bothered by something of late. I never told you where I came from, did I? Where I grew up as a child? I suppose I was trying to deny what I was feeling. I have been wrestling with my feelings inside, trying to come to terms with it, but I find I cannot. I must have someone to blame. Someone to blame for the destruction of my homeworld. Someone who is responsible for the death of everyone I have ever known except those on Dantooine. Taris. It was Taris that the Sith destroyed to try to kill you and your precious Bastilla. Taris, my homeworld. If it were not for you and Bastilla, the Sith would have never had reason to destroy that world. It was your fault for being there and your fault for rescuing Bastilla. Without your intervention, the Sith would have had no cause to lay waste to my childhood. Just let me vent my anger. I need someone to blame. Something. Anything. I hated that world. Yet everything I learned as a child, I learned there. It is as much a part of me as the air I breathe. I have this ache inside me, where all my childhood memories lay, and I find your face there with them. If it was not for you, that world would still exist. There is no emotion. There is peace. I suppose you did what you had to, and it could not have been avoided. The Republic needs you and Bastila. Maybe needs you more than it needed Taris. But it is so hard to lose your entire past. You would not understand. I suppose that is to be expected. Everything will turn out for the best, as long as we remain focused on our task. I am sorry. I will try not to distract you in the future with my trivial experiences. We should stop for now. Yes. What is... I was... 
No, it's all right. I think I'm over the worst of it. I apologize again for lashing out at you. It was not your fault. It was a horrible place to have to live. At least in the lower cities where the non-humans tended to get relegated. Living for years in a place with no sun, living off the trash dropped from the upper levels, and the meager pay doing back-breaking labor. There was always the danger of raccoons coming up from the sewers, or more mundane predators living and working in the area. My family and I struggled each and every day to make something of our lives, but we could only go so far. Taxes from the corrupt government, more fees from the gangs controlling the streets, and whatever was left paying for what food and medical supplies we could afford. It did not, but only because of the Jedi who came. It was very bad. We had no money to spare for any amenities. Even the Enclave on Dantooine seems a paradise in comparison. And of course, there was the constant bigotry and hate from the more affluent and human citizens, lording their wealth over us living below. Every once in a while, a rich human would come down through the lower levels with his droid entourage just to see how the wildlife lived and laughed at the mockeries that were our successes. But I have come to meet many decent humans in my travels since those days. Indeed, some of the greatest people I have ever met are human. The Jedi who encouraged me to join the Order the one who was with the group going to fight the Mandalorians. She was human. I am sorry. I am getting away from my point. If there even was one. Sometimes, I curse the day my parents fled to Taris. But then again, if they had not, I would not be where I am today. Another story for another time. How may I be of assistance? What is it you would like? Well, I mentioned before that my parents had fled to Taris. Perhaps I can tell you about that. In the early days of the Mandalorian War, there had been fighting closer to the Outer Rim worlds. Cathar was there, yes. My people had a great reputation as warriors, and that appealed to the Mandalore version of honor. They sought to test themselves against us, I think. Test themselves by bombing our world, slaughtering my people while they slept or while they ran. They swooped down from space across the world, firing at anything that moved. They used ships in space to destroy all orbital facilities and bombard the surface. We did resist, and in spite of their violent attack, we did stave them off for quite a while. But in the end, we were doomed. We were not members of the Republic. Cathar was beyond the edge of the Republic, and the Outer Rim. And besides, they could not have known. Our interstellar communications were the first things the Mandalores hit. All other short-range communicators were jammed. We were on our own. We knew what was coming. We had fought the Mandalorians in the first war against Exar Kun and the Sith. We knew there would be no mercy for us. The most we could do was pack the few of our people who survived onto what few ships remained and send them off into space as fast as they could. Most did not make it. My parents carried me as a baby with them, and were lucky enough to escape. They fled as far as they were able, and eventually settled on Taris. They could stand running no further, I think. But Taris was a horrible choice. Dominated by humans, intolerant of other species, made everyday life unnecessarily hard. My father... My father turned to stimulants. He spent much of his time in local bars and dives. But we are warriors. 
It runs through our blood. And when he was on stems, he, he, he became foolish. He let his warrior nature get the best of him. So he would get intoxicated, and he would fight. And finally, one day, he would die. Killed by a man who provoked him into a fight and killed him like an animal. I, I am sorry. I, I cannot talk about this any longer right now. How may I be of assistance? What is it you... I have been thinking much about our journey. I am not used to such... We Cathar do not make... In truth, I have lived in the Republic too long, and I know little. I never met any others of my race other than my parents. But we are not diplomats. We do not deal well with groups. This situation is new to me. It is... it is warming. I feel almost welcome. Needed. You seem to be very decisive when it is required of you. It is reassuring to know that I can count on someone like you. Yes, and that is my point. I find it difficult to explain. It is so different from what I am used to. Just thank you for accepting me. How may I be of... What? Of... How may I be of assistance? What is it you would like? Of course.
Yeah, what do you want? Your choice. Statement. HK-40. Oh, sup. Uh.